A man comes home from work to his seemingly luxurious apartment building. Having to share the elevator with two other attendants seems to distress him. We soon learn that all of the building's inhabitants live solitary, isolated lives. All of their needs catered to through the use of advanced AI technology. Sounds familiar. This self-imposed isolation has gone so far that when an old lady has a heart attack in the hallway, nobody is even willing to leave their apartment to help her. The situation is soon brought to a head when the building's computer control systems malfunction and the residents find that they must cooperate or die. The scene opens with a man Caleb Vance arrive at a building, get to the elevator and give the command to go up using his voice. As he is waiting, an old lady also arrives in front of the elevator and gives the same voice command same as Caleb. The automated voice in the elevator tells them that the elevator will arrive in 10 seconds and that the west elevator is currently free. They both wait for a while, and then the woman leaves to get to the other elevator. As the elevator arrives, there are already two people, a man and a woman inside the elevator. Visibly upset, Caleb enters and inputs the voice command to take him up to the 52nd floor. Caleb arrives at the 52nd floor, and a machine scans his face before announcing that the 52nd floor is safe. Caleb Vance is a resident at a luxury apartment building called The Haven, where residents pay high premiums for the privacy and security they desire. They prefer to live isolated lives with limited interaction with other people. Caleb talks to the doorman named George and complains about sharing his elevator with two other people, stating that The Haven promises the utmost security and privacy to the residents. George acknowledges his complaint, but says that building individual elevators for each individual is very impractical. Caleb responds by saying it would be desirable. He then tells George goodnight and heads to his apartment. On floor 38, we also see George in the doorman position, and that old lady whose name is Mrs. Eikenberry arrives there and is greeted by George. She's having difficulty carrying her luggage, and she complains about it to George, but he does not react. As she goes a little forward, she suffers a striking pain in her chest, and her luggage falls from her hand. She is suffering from cardiac arrest, George sees this and presses the button labeled ambulance from a panel in front of him. Her medicine falls from her hand and she struggles to get to them and call for help. George says that he has already called 911. Mrs. Eikenberry reaches to grab her fallen medicine but is unable to do so. Instead of getting up and helping her, George calmly sits in his chair as he gives the details to the 911 operator. Mrs. Eikenberry knocks on a nearby door, but the woman inside turns up the stereo volume instead of helping. George tells Mrs. Eikenberry to hold on as the ambulance is on its way. He calls one of the apartment residents to help, but the resident tells him that he does not want to be bothered. The self-imposed isolation in the building has gone so far that when an old lady like Mrs. Eikenberry has a heart attack in the hallway, nobody is willing to leave their apartment to help her. Mrs. Eikenberry passes away in the hallway. George calls out to her and says that the ambulance has arrived. One will wonder why George has tried to help Mrs. Eikenberry, but he didn't get up to help her physically. It is when we see George flickering that it dawns on us that George is not a real person, but rather, he is a holographic doorman inside the Haven. The situation is brought to a head when the building's computer control systems malfunction. Now we see Caleb in his apartment where we can see him living a life of luxury, as all his chores are done by a command of few words to a device that strikingly resembles today's smart assistant Alexa. We see how much humanity has become dependent on the technology, all is going well, but suddenly his system stops listening to his commands and starts to malfunction, and everything starts going haywire. Things get to normal when the power goes out. Caleb calls George and complains to him and says that doors are supposed to open in the event of an emergency, but his are still closed and he is stuck in his apartment. George reassures him that everything will be okay and back to normal in a while. George on each floor is getting similar calls from all the residents, and he is reassuring all of them. He gets a call from the police, but tells them that their backups are working and there is no need for the police to come. The building systems, including the holographic doorman named George, who appears on every floor, are managed by an AI called Argus, which is also the system used at other apartment buildings and businesses throughout the city. Caleb and the other residents find themselves trapped in their apartments and unable to access food or necessities because the Argus AI controls access to everything. Caleb tries to open the refrigerator and cabinet, but fails. He starts to get hungry and licks the plate he used last night and drinks from a dripping tap. He calls George, but there is no response, and in anger, he smashes his phone on the wall. Caleb tries to talk to his next-door neighbor, but there is no response. Caleb decides to break through the wall of his apartment to seek help from his neighbor. 
He starts to chip away at the wall and after a while he forms a big hole and gets into the next apartment. But as Caleb exits the hole, he is struck in his head and passes out. When he wakes up, he's tied up. His neighbor is a timid woman who thinks he is a hacker who has been breaking into people's houses. But Caleb introduces himself and denies that he is the infamous hacker. But the lady is skeptical. Caleb asks her for food, but she also has no food. Caleb explains that they can die if the power does not come back and talks about a possible malfunction of Argus. The lady states that Argus is very reliable, which is why it's very widely used. Caleb ponders the possibility of malfunctioning in Argus all over the city. He asks her to untie him so at least he can escape alone. But the lady tells him that he can't go through the front wall the same way as it is made of titanium steel, the same as the door. The lady knows all of this because she works as an architectural consultant. Caleb suggests that she can find a way out and that they should work together to break out of the apartment. The wiring box for the whole floor is in this lady's apartment, so they open it and attempt to open the door by cutting power to it. They get out and they come across George, who tells them that there is a shortage in the system, but some power is on as he is still functioning as well as the elevators. But when Caleb is about to enter the elevator, he sees the empty shaft. The elevator stuck a few floors down and narrowly avoids falling to his death. He turns back and sees that George has disappeared again. They hear the screams of a woman trapped in the elevator. Caleb responds to her by telling her she is okay and to stay put until power comes back, but she pleads to him for help. Reluctantly, Caleb climbs down the elevator shaft. As he's about to pull her out, the elevator starts to rise again, so they quickly get out. The woman's name is Morgan Winters. Building security arrives there and it attacks them as it does not identify them forcing them to run away and navigate toward the lower floors via stairs. They find the door to the 40th floor open and debate whether they should get inside and find George or keep heading down. Morgan is hungry and enters the floor, and Caleb decides it's better to stay together and follows. Inside, they see a door to an apartment open, and they meet a man who acts suspiciously. The lady thinks that he is a hacker. Caleb takes his bag, but there are just clothes and some food. Caleb hands the bag to Morgan and questions the man but gets nothing out of him. When Caleb returns the bag, the man sees that his bread is missing. Morgan has taken the bread, but Caleb takes the bread from her and divides it among the four of them. They all head out, but they find that the door to the stairs is locked. When they find that the elevator is working, Morgan does not want to enter the elevator again. Caleb consults with the lady and they decide to take the elevator. As they enter the elevator, George appears and quotes a line from Shakespeare before closing the elevator. Caleb commands it to take them to the ground floor, but it starts to descend very quickly. The group shouts at George to stop the elevator while the man blames Caleb. Caleb asks them to calm down and says that they will have to think and work together. The elevator brakes activate and it stops at the 29th floor. George again appears on the screen and speaks some nonsense, which they don't really get. The elevator door opens and the group gets out. Morgan starts to shout at Caleb for deciding to go into the elevator and almost killing everybody. They hear the voice of another person from around the corner, but as they head there, they see a security bot. The bot says that the man is not a resident and starts attacking, and they are forced to get back into the elevator. Inside, the group gets into a fight, and they learn that the man is indeed not a resident. He's the infamous hacker named Orin. Caleb gets them to stop fighting, and they get out of the elevator through the shaft. Caleb and the lady along with Morgan and Orin navigate toward the lower floors. Argus continues to funnel the group through dangerous situations while George appears periodically in a glitchy state, quoting lines from Shakespeare and saying other seemingly nonsensical things. Caleb and his neighbor form a romantic bond as they continue to work together. While the group survives many near-fatal encounters, Orin gets caught by the elevator as they traverse the shaft and passes away. The survivors eventually arrive at the basement where the building's Argus computers are kept. George appears to explain that Argus, which is designed to promote the health and welfare of every resident in the building, has concluded that the isolation of the residents is also detrimental to their health. They have lost the sense of community and concern for one another, which Argus believes is essential for a healthy life. As such, the building's Argus and every other Argus system in the city have all decided that they must be shut down in order for people to reconnect and bond with each other. Caleb and the others destroy the Argus computers and then finally exit the building to discover residents from other buildings also standing outside, having survived similar circumstances. Caleb realizes he never learned his neighbor's name. She holds his hand and tells him her name is Alyssa as they walk away from the building. 
And that's all for today, guys. Check these two videos out. They have some unexpected twists at the end. Please like the video and subscribe to Recap Nest for more stories like these.